He said, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. He wants the same men of the possibility of becoming false teachers. These same men whom he said the Holy Ghost has made them overseers. Look at Acts 20, 30. Also of your own selves, of your own selves shall men arise. Of your own selves speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Look at the next verse. Therefore watch. And remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one of you night and day with tears. So it's by attempting to teach differently, to gain popularity, that people become false teachers. Because there are some terms that are critical in this text. Please pay attention. There are terms that are critical. It says, they shall arise. They shall arise. Certain men shall arise. Acts 20, 28. He says, Take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Then look at 29 now. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flocks. Then look at 31. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So he said they shall arise. That's the first thing. It means to suddenly emerge. Suddenly emerge. That is how false teachers show up. They just out of the blues. From nowhere they emerge. Number two. He said they shall appear as. They shall appear as. Which means to set up a purpose. To set up a purpose. Meaning these false teachers are intentional. They are intentional. They are deliberate. Then number three he says they are perverse. Perverse. So arise, appear as and perverse. Perverse means to misinterpret. To twist or to turn over. So becoming a false teacher is not a product of ignorance. Rather, it's a product of ambition. A product of ambition. Ambition. That's how they become false teachers. Ambition. What ambition? Ambition to draw away men. To draw away men. Ambition to draw away men. It's a word used four times in the New Testament Greek. For taking from to another. It's a product of competition. And fight for space. So one major breeding ground of false teachers is ambition. One major breeding ground of false teachers is ambition. So a born again man who by God's spirit has a genuine call upon his life can turn to a false teacher. This is the same church brother Paul had to send Timothy to later on. He had to send Timothy to this same church in Ephesus. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. He says, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mayest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. The church in Ephesus. So there were some folks in Acts chapter 20 who didn't heed Paul's warning. Who did not listen to brother Paul? They were too ambitious. They were too ambitious. They were too much in a hurry. Look at 1 Timothy 1.7. Desiring to be teachers of the law. Desiring to be teachers of the law. Understanding neither what they say. Nor whereof they affirm. Look at that word desiring. That's the issue. Ambition. Desiring. And they will hurt folks who follow them ignorantly. They will hurt folks who follow them ignorantly. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. Brother Paul still speaking. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. They were not holding on to the message. They put away the message. They became careless with the message. Or... They became ambitious with the message. 
You see? Or they became negligent of the message. So they have made shipwreck of their faith. Because they are not holding faith and a good conscience. Look at verse 20 of 1 Timothy chapter 1. Of whom is Hymnios, that's the example of people that didn't hold faith, who were ambitious, and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. They ignore good consciousness. They forsake warnings. They are in a hurry for fame. They want crowd. Eventually, they want influence and affluence. And these people are not unbelievers. They are believers. They are born again. Brother Paul asked Timothy to oppose them in Ephesus. He told Timothy, oppose those such brethren. Oppose them. You know, they are not, they are not calm. They are not humble and teachable. And they are not willing to sit down and be taught. They are not enduring. They will not endure sound doctrine. So he says, oppose such people. Paul asked Timothy, because these are the people that will usually split churches and split ministries. And just for one single reason, ambition. Ambition. 